Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I've got a really fun light up box card for you. It features images from the Rabbit Hole Designs Sophisticated stamp set. It's really cute. Let me show you how it works. The card folds flat to fit in a regular A2 sized envelope. And I've got an area on the back where you can write your sentiment. And then there's a little hidden button. Let me show you when I turn down the lights. Isn't that cute? And that light is bright enough that even in daylight you can see it just fine. But I had the, the bright lights on for the studio there. So the first thing that you're going to do is die cut your parts. Now I'm using the Lawn Fawn die set. It's the Shadow Box, I believe it's called. I'll have links in my blog to everything I used. You're going to cut two pieces for the box. Um, the front piece you want to go ahead and put the um, window in place. And that window as well as this wave die here and the little seaweed and seashells, those are from the Ocean add-on set. Notice that that wave piece that I cut here is a little bit longer. So in order to do that, um, I just put it between my two cutting plates with the paper extending down out of the bottom and I'm going to line it up so that the top cut plate is not over the bottom of the die then when I run it through my big shot I've still got uh, that place underneath that hadn't been cut then I cut a stitch side or a stitch till side and that's going to be the sand that little banner is from Mama Elephant uh, for the back of my box, the place to write the sentiment, I went ahead and I cut um, a stitched rectangle. And then I just trim it down with a wave border. And if you don't have the, the wave border set there from Lawn Fawn, you can use the same wave that was in the, uh, the add-on set. And just uh, do the same partial die cutting. Now I also cut a rectangle for the back of the box. And then I cut it about about a third of the way down with the same die again. And that's going to give me a place to hide the button and the battery for my light when I pop it up in there. So the next step is to stamp our pieces. And I'm using the anglerfish and a few scenery pieces from the sophisticated set. And the sentiment says, let your light shine. I thought that was super cute. I wanted to stamp it in a navy blue ink rather than black. I just thought it would lend itself to the color scheme a little bit better um, and not be so harsh. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of my stamps in place there. Now this is the second card that I made and um, I just didn't clean my stamps in between. The ink did not stain my stamps. In fact, after I was done, they cleaned up and looked clear and just as good as new. Um, but like I said, this is the second card that I made. So I wanted to, I just was lazy and didn't clean the stamps. So I'm going to ink them up with that pigment ink. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp them twice. You saw me prep the paper first with an anti-static powder tool. That just helps stray embossing powder not stick to the paper. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and ink these up just a little bit more. Make sure I have even coverage there. And all of the white pieces are all watercolor paper. It's a heavyweight, I think it's 140 pound watercolor paper. And then I'm going to go ahead and just uh, sprinkle on the clear embossing powder. And for that banner, I want to grab it with my tweezers uh, for two reasons. One, I don't want to smear the ink. And two, when I go to heat set it, I don't want to uh, burn my fingers because they'd be so close to the heat source. So I'm just putting that clear embossing powder on top and then I can melt it with my heat gun. And I like the texture and the, the little bit of shine that you get when you emboss your images, so I do that often. And I've been playing around with using colored ink instead of just straight black. I like the, the way that it looks. 
So I wanted to fussy cut these images and I used my scan and cut for that. Notice that I left a, a narrow border around the edge. And that was helpful. Um, the next thing to do is to go ahead and ink smoosh the backgrounds. So I'm gonna put five colors of blue Distress Oxide ink down and then I'm I'm smashing it onto my craft mat, but I'm I'm kind of putting them in order, uh, left to right. It's light to dark colors. And if you don't have distress oxides, you can use other ink pads. You could even use watercolor. Uh, but we're just gonna add some water to the ink here, and then we'll pick up our pieces. Now this is the the background piece, so it's going to be the furthest away. So you'd want it to be the darkest. So I'm, I'm just starting there and I'm going to grab these, the two darker colors. And when I have big globs of, of liquid on there, I'll let it kind of sit for a second to start drying a little bit. And then I can move it around a little bit more. If you have too much paint, it'll all just run together. Or I'm sorry, too much ink. Uh, so you can let it sit for a second and, and start to dry just a little bit. But it, it's easy to do and lots of fun. You will get your fingers inky, so if you don't want to stain your fingers, you might want to grab a pair of gloves for this. And I did use my heat gun between layers just to speed the process up, but you could let them sit. And also, I decided I wanted to go back and add two or three layers of color to each one because that gives me a little more texture. It's less of a, a blended look. It's, it's more splotchy, which is what I wanted. And after I got my blue pieces done, I'm going to do the sand layer, which is that stitched hillside. I just grabbed two of my yellows, and I'm going to repeat the process here. You don't need a lot of ink because it's just a small piece. And I'll play with it, adding some light and dark. I like the, the variation of two colors. You could just leave one color or use one color if you wanted to, but I like the, the two-tone look. And after those pieces are inked up, I'm going to go ahead and watercolor the stamped images and the, the small die-cut scenery pieces here. And I just pulled out my Prima watercolors and a round number four paintbrush. It has a nice uh, tight tip down at the bottom. It comes to a fine point. And then I'm just going to speed through the coloring here. I don't... Um, I don't spend a lot of time on this. It, it was fairly easy. The only thing I'm really trying to keep in mind is the light source. And that would come from the little dangly part of that anglerfish. And for the life of me, I can't remember what that's called right now. <laughs> um, so I'm just coming in with several shades of yellow and orange. And then even this burnt orange color here for my anglerfish. And notice that I'm kind of jumping around a lot. The embossed edges acts like it creates a little bit of a well, but if you have too much wet stuff next to each other, it will, one section can bleed into the other easily. So if you let it dry a little bit um, in one section before you work on the next section, you'll have better luck and less bleeding. And so you see me kind of skip around on these other parts here. I'm going to just put a coat down and then move on to another piece and then after it dries for a minute I can come back with another color. You see how I can come in with the dark colors here and it doesn't bleed into the lighter colors there. And for the seaweed I, I used greens and then a little bit of blue because our background is blue so it would make sense to have some blue reflections coming in there too. And if you get a color that you don't like, you can just add more water and lift it up with your paper towel. Um, I used my heat gun a little bit just to help speed up the process and then I could play with it a little bit more. But I wanted some nice bright pops of color. Remember the background's primarily blue, so the reds and oranges will pop off nicely.
And after I've got those colored, we can go ahead and start putting the box together. We're just going to put, we're just going to connect the two main pieces of the box because before we put all the tabs in, we want to build our circuit in the back. And the circuit is going to go on the very back panel there. So I want to connect the two box pieces first because the little tab will overlap. If you connect them after you've already built the circuit and covered it up with the the ink smushed paper, you would see the tab. So in order to avoid that, I'm going to just go ahead and put the two pieces together now. And I want to gently fold along the score marks, especially on that front piece where the window is cut out. Uh, you have to fold gently, otherwise it'll bend in a place you don't want it to. So just go slow. And I'm using a heavy duty uh, double stick tape. This is the Sukwang tape. Uh, it works great for putting boxes together. That tab is, it's a pretty narrow tab. Uh, if it were any longer, then the piece would be over six inches. So luckily it, it's a little narrow, but you can cut, uh, if you're using 12 inch paper, you can cut, let's see, one, two, three, four boxes out of that. So, so that, that tab is a little narrow, but you get better use out of paper with it. Now I can go ahead and line up to see where I'm going to want the fish to live in the box so that I'll know where to uh, put the light because we're going to build the circuit next here. So I've just go ahead, I've gone ahead and lined everything up. I'm going to grab a pencil and I'm going to mark right underneath where I want the light. And now I'm going to use an eighth inch hole punch and I will punch through there. This piece is going to go flat onto the back of the card base and the bottom portion is going to be popped up with foam tape. That's why it's cut in the first place. But I'm going to put the light on the very back and then you won't see it. So this is my power pack kit or part of it here. I've got Chibitronics lights. If you're not familiar with them, they have uh, positive and negative copper pads. The light is that yellow thing in the center. And then there's a little black resistor on the side. Make sure when you're assembling your card that you don't accidentally put any copper tape on that resistor. And once you've marked the placement for your light, you can go ahead and take the sticker and just stick it down on top of the little pencil mark. And on my website, I have a uh, a video that shows you some tips and techniques and goes through this whole process a little bit slower. Uh, I'll link to that as well here. This is a power pack. This has um, the battery holder and the switch all in one so that all you have to do is run copper tape um, to your light and, and you're ready to go. Notice that I left that little acetate tab under the battery People have been asking me, how can you mail it and make sure that your battery isn't dead when it gets there? So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, we'll leave the acetate in place. Um, I will take it out to test it, but for the most part, um, we'll leave it in place. So I'm going to show you how to, to send it out um, with the acetate in place. So I used some double stick tape, and then I just went ahead and stuck my power pack in place. And notice that the positive and negative side is marked on the power pack. It's also marked on the light. And you're just going to want to run positive to positive and negative to negative with the copper tape. When I applied the light to the card, when I stuck the sticker down, I was careful not to get my fingers all over the, the copper tabs on it. Any, any oils from your fingers could transfer and then cause a little more resistance. It probably is fine, but if you're going to leave the um, acetate in place to stick it in the mail, you want to make sure that your circuit is as secure as possible. Um, so we're not going to break the tape this time. Th this tape does have conductive adhesive, meaning you can uh, tear the tape, stick it one piece to the next, and the electricity will flow through it. But anytime you have an issue 
with a light up card, generally the issue is that the copper tape um, isn't conducting very well. You have a maybe a poor connection or a, a flaky connection. So in order to get the best possible circuit, don't break your tape if you can avoid it and try not to touch any place with your, um, you don't want to touch underneath with your fingers. You don't want to transfer any oils to those pads. And then you just go ahead and burnish it down with your fingers. And I did remove that acetate just so I can show you that this works. It's pretty simple, right? So now I need to put it back in place. Uh, those boards are very thin. It's uh, a little tricky once they're stuck to the paper. You don't want to accidentally bend your paper. So um, I used the stylus there to, to pull it out or push the battery out. Then I've got the acetate right back in place underneath that battery. And that'll protect it when it goes through the mail. It won't accidentally drain the battery if something is pushing down on that switch. So now I'm going to make sure that the background pieces line up nicely. And I'm going to take some double stick tape, or double sided foam, I'm sorry. And I'm going to use that to pop up the bottom half of the background. Uh, the power pack is about the thickness of a double layer of foam tape. So I'll just double it up and then I'm going to cut the foam tape in half lengthwise. Saves, saves foam tape and also uh, gives me a, a little more room to work. So here's my trick so that you can have the foam support but still be able to get the um, acetate out of your card. I'm going to just cut through the release paper on either side of the bottom of the foam tape there. You see that? I've got a, a little nick on either side of that release paper. I'm just making sure I've got it lined up correctly. And then I'll peel off the release paper on either side, but I'm leaving that, that piece right there in place. And then I can stick the tape down. And I'm going to make sure I did not accidentally grab that acetate. But you see the acetate can move. And then you can go ahead and build the rest of your card with the acetate in place and stick it in the mail that way. You will want to let your recipient know to, to take that out, but I think uh, we're all trained to, to do that nowadays. So then the next part is to just go ahead and add a little bit more double stick tape, or I'm sorry, double sided foam. And then we'll just, uh, I'm checking as I go to make sure that I'm not overlapping anything, any other layers of foam and I'm not sticking it on top of the battery or anything like that because then it would get too thick. Also, I'm being careful with the foam tape. It, it's fine to touch the copper tape with it, but you don't want to connect the positive side to the negative side with the foam. You never know if it's got anything conductive in it and you wouldn't want to short out the circuit. So it's fine if it touches one side of the tape. You just don't want one piece of foam to connect and go across bridge both pieces. Then we can peel back the release paper and stick the background down. And now I'm going to glue this other piece flat to the back of the card. If you wanted, you could leave that hole and, and pop up the whole thing. Um, you could leave that background piece hole, I mean, and you could pop up the entire piece. If you do that, not as much light will come through because some of it will obviously hit the, the top of the, the watercolor paper there. And that paper is pretty dense, so it won't come through very well. So you get a, 
you get more light coming through if you allow the, the light to be as popped up as possible there. Next, we can figure out the placement for the fish. Now, you don't want too much of it to be covered up by that bottom wave. If the, uh, the bottom wave covers it, then it doesn't look like clear water. It, it looks like something is something's fishy with that water. <laughs> you should be able to see through from one layer of water to the next is the idea. So try not to cover the fish up. And I just put glue on the bottom half of him. He is elevated a little bit. Um, and that's fine. Now I'm going to go ahead and fold the bridges, I guess you'd call them, the struts. And I'm just folding the tabs over. And then we can lay out our scenery pieces. And I'll glue those in place. First, I think I'm going to get that other piece of seaweed in, in place there. I want to make sure that I don't have it too far left or right, because then the, the frame of the box or of the window would cover it up. So I've got my pieces kind of coming in about a quarter of an inch or so from the left or right side. Yeah, I'll go ahead and glue down the the big green piece of seaweed first and I'm gonna move it down a little bit it, it does hang off the bottom here so I'll trim that away with my scissors you'd want the bottom to be flat and now I'll glue these pieces to the sand and I laid them out so that Again, they're not hidden by the window, but also they're not covering up the fish. And I like the mix of the die cut pieces with the stamped images. It feels fun to me. They they work together. And since I colored them all with the same color mediums, it all works nicely. So I'm just going to tuck in these two seashells here. The red one, I'm going to glue flat just like the other pieces. But for that other shell, I didn't want everything on that layer to all be flat. So I decided to grab some uh, foam adhesive here. One thing I do if I cut off a little weird random shape, I'll save it, just stick it to the side of the roll, and then I can use it later for things like this. So now that sand layer has just a, a little bit more dimension to it. it. Everything doesn't look so flat. And I wanted to mark the button. If you want to stamp push here, you can do that, but make sure you do that before you glue that or foam tape it down. Um, I did not want to use the stamp. I just wanted to write it with my white gel pen. And so I kind of marked where the button is and I wrote push and drew a little arrow. Uh, because it's watercolor paper, it's pretty absorbent. So no matter what kind of gel pen you use or Posca pen, either way, you're going to have to kind of add a little bit of extra. You might have to go over it twice like I did. Then I'm going to go ahead and glue the struts in place. Now notice that I'm leaving a nice big gap between the back layer and this uh, wave layer. I want to make sure that I have plenty of room for my finger uh, to find that button and push it. You don't want to have to hunt around for it. And also leaving a little bit of a a little bit more space allows you to see that it says push from the top and the bottom. 
If you have those layers too close together, you wouldn't be able to see that. And you can use the double stick tape, the same tape that I used to um, glue the, the box pieces together or, or stick the, the box pieces together, but I had the, uh, the PVA glue out. And one thing I didn't account for when I trimmed the rectangle to go into the back was the double stick tape. It's, it's a double layer of foam, so it's pretty thick. So when I want to fold the card shut, uh, it, it kind of hits a little bit of a, a foam wall there. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim out a little bit. If I make this card again in the future, I'll just trim this piece down by an eighth of an inch from the side. And in this case, what I did was just trim a little bit from either side that sticks up. And then I used uh, my PVA glue to just glue this one side back in place. It's so close to the edge and so much other stuff is going on in this card, you can't tell. It's very hard to see that I did this. But like I said, if I did this again, I would just trim an extra eighth of an inch off the side there and that would allow for the, uh, the foam tape thickness. And a little bit of that foam was sticking out. You could see it. So I grabbed a, a blue marker and touched it up so it, it fades into the background now. Now we can go ahead and glue the tabs in place. And I'm just going to use more of that PVA glue here. Again, the double stick tape would work great too. You don't have to wait for it to set up. It sets up immediately. And then we can close up the top of the card. It's It's got a little bit of bulk because of all of that foam tape in there. So you, you push a little bit more. You kind of got to push those edges together to meet up correctly. But it's not bad at all. And now you've got a box card. Isn't that fun? And see how much room I have there for my finger? Plenty of room. So now you can decide where you want your banner to rest on the front of the card. And you can also put this in place with the double or the foam adhesive, but it's such a small area. I thought that this stands out just fine on its own, so I glued it flat to the, the window. And then we need to put the back on. I like this lighter piece. It gives me a, a nice place to write my message for the recipient of my card. And if you follow me, you notice that uh, I use that PVA glue in a fine line bottle all the time. Normally I have a yellow tip bottle, which has a, a bigger gauge needle for applying the glue. And I switched over to the blue one, which is a finer gauge, just because I thought I might like it better. But I've tried it for, I don't know, a couple weeks now, and I've decided that I like the yellow better. So I'm going to switch it. And incidentally, I got some diamond glaze and put into another fine, fine line bottle, and I put the yellow tip on it, and I decided that that's too big. So I'm just going to clean out the, the caps and switch them over. I, I've decided I like the yellow cap for the PVA and the blue cap for the diamond glaze. Okay, so now the card's ready to be mailed. It fits into a regular A2 envelope. And when your recipient gets it, he can just pull out the little acetate and it works. Isn't that cute? That's fun. So if you wanna glitz it up just a little bit more, you can bring in a shimmer pen. This is my Nouveau Aqua Shimmer Pen. And I'm just going to add a little bit to my anglerfish. And because that is watercolor, the Nouveau will reactivate that paint and start moving it around. So off to the left, you don't see it, but I do have a scrap piece of paper there. And I'm just kind of cleaning up the brush tip when I switch colors. And I'm not putting it everywhere. I'm just kind of highlighting a few places here and there on the fish. And then I also decided that little red shell could use a, a pop of glitter. And then I clean off that tip there before I put the lid back on the pen. And here's my diamond glaze. Again, it has the, the yellow. I'm going to switch that to the blue because <laughs> you get a lot of diamond glaze really fast. But it works great for the fish eye. 
So here it is, a much better, cleaner picture after it's all dry. And I really like the way this turned out. I hope you do too. I hope you've been inspired to create your own light up box card. And uh, again, this light is plenty bright in the daylight. You can see it when you push the button, but I had those studio lights on it and, and they're extra bright. So I wanted to dim it down for you. If you like today's card, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I'd appreciate it. Go ahead and click that bell when you do so that you don't miss any notifications for new videos. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy. And you can find links to all of the products that I used on my blog, which is down below. And as always, my friend, thanks for watching.